Today I'm excited to sew and share my very first style arc pattern. This is the Belle Woven Dress. It's a beautiful long dress with shirring detail at the back waistline and optional shirring in the sleeves. If you've never done shirring before with elastic thread, I'll tell you that this was my very first time. I practiced for about an hour experimenting with my stitch length and my tension. When I finally got it just right, I entered into this sewing project with a lot of confidence. It was really fun to try and conquer a new skill and I know that you could do the same. I've left a link to the pattern below so that you could check out all the details, grab a copy, and sew it along with me. So grab that pattern, cut out your fabric, mark your notches, and let's get started. We're going to start by shirring our back waist panel. The back waist panel has six rows of shirring that are marked on our pattern piece. I use tracing paper and a tracing wheel to transfer these lines onto my fabric. And you want these lines to be on the right side of your fabric so that you can use them as your stitching guides for your top thread. I'm going to load my bobbin with elastic thread and I'm not going to be stretching the thread at all, just loosely winding it around the bobbin. And now that the bobbin is about halfway full, I'm just going to snip the thread. I'm going to place this in my bobbin case as usual and I'm ready to sew my six rows of shirring onto this back panel. I'm using a stitch length of five and I've increased my stitch tension to seven. I'm going to sew each of the six rows from one end all the way to the other, back stitching at both ends to secure the threads. So here is my shirred back panel. I'm going to take it to my ironing board and with the iron hovering just above the material, I'm going to apply a little bit of steam which will help shrink up the fabric even further. Shirring the sleeve piece is optional, and there are five rows at the middle of each sleeve. I've transferred the lines from my pattern piece faintly to the front of my fabric for both of my sleeves. Now I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and shir in the same way as I did for the back panel piece, starting for each row from one end all the way to the other, back stitching at both ends to secure the threads. Do your shirring for both of your sleeves and just like we did for the back panel, take it to your ironing board and apply a little bit of steam to shrink it up a little bit further. At the top of your sleeve, you have notches indicating where we're going to be doing our gathering. We're going to take both of our sleeves to the sewing machine and baste using the longest stitch on your machine from the outer notch to the outer notch with about a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure to leave threads on both tails so that you have threads to pull for gathering and do this for the tops of both sleeves. I want to prepare the bottom of my sleeve for the elastic casing. I've taken both of my sleeves to the ironing board and pressed up the bottom edge to the inside by one inch. I also additionally press the raw edge to the inside by a quarter of an inch. Now with those ironed hem creases laid out flat, Place both ends of your sleeves right sides together and pin your underarm seam. Then take both of your sleeves to your sewing machine and sew these underarm seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then finish those seams in your preferred method, I've used my serger. Now using these memory creases that I pressed into the bottom of the sleeve hem, we're going to sew the casing and then insert our elastic. I'm going to fold the hem along the topmost crease line and tuck the quarter inch crease line for the raw edge underneath. Then I'm going to edge stitch close to that folded edge all the way around. And when I get back to where I started my stitching, I'm going to leave a gap of about one inch for inserting my elastic. Do this for the bottoms of both sleeves. I've cut a piece of quarter inch wide elastic according to the size measurements included in your pattern instructions. Now attaching a safety pin to one short edge of the elastic, I'm going to draw it through the casing at the bottom of my sleeve through the opening I left in my stitches. Once my elastic comes out the other end, I'm going to overlap the ends of the elastic by about 3 eighths of an inch and zigzag stitch back and forth a few times to secure. Once that's secured, pull the elastic to the inside of the casing 
and then stitch that casing closed following your original stitching line. And do this to finish the bottoms of both sleeves. I've used my front neck interfacing pattern piece to cut two pieces of interfacing for the front bodice piece. And now I've fused those interfacing strips to the wrong sides of both of my front bodice pieces according to the markings on the pattern piece. Now I'm also going to take both of these pieces back to the ironing board and fold my interfaced outer edge to the wrong side by 3 eighths of an inch. Once you've folded back and pressed that outer raw edge, you also want to press this entire interfacing section to the wrong side along this inner line of your interfacing. Once you have this placket folded to the inside, you're going to stitch close to this inner folded edge all the way from the top to the bottom and do this for both bodice pieces. At the top and bottom of your front bodice piece, you have notches indicating where we're going to be doing some gathering. Just as we did for the top of the sleeve, you're going to use the longest stitch on your machine, leaving thread tails on both sides, and sew from notch to notch with about a quarter inch seam allowance. Do this for both front bodice pieces for your top and bottom edges. Apply interfacing to both sets of front waist yoke pieces. Then place these sets right sides together and pin together along the longer vertical edges. Sew these edges with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you've sewn that seam, open up this front waist yoke and you're going to top stitch on the side of the seam that has the seam allowance right underneath it. So you're sewing this front waist yoke to the seam allowance from top to bottom about an eighth of an inch away from your original stitching line and you're doing this for both of the front waist yoke pieces. Now we can attach the yoke to the bottom of the bodice. We're going to place our top curved edge of the yoke right sides together with the bodice so that the seam of the yoke matches with the bottom center front of the bodice. And we're going to sandwich this bottom edge in between these two halves of the yoke. Pin in place at the center front and then pin from the notch to the side seam. Start pulling the gathering stitches at the bottom of your bodice so that the bodice fits the yoke between the notches. Once it fits and your gathers are distributed evenly, go ahead and pin in place. Sew the yoke to the bottom of your bodice with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once that's sewn, turn the yoke right side out and give this seam a really good press. Once it's sewn, we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch below that yoke seam from center front to the side seam. Repeat all of these steps to attach your yoke to your opposite front bodice piece. Now take your back bodice piece to your sewing machine and we're going to sew basting stitches from notch to notch using the longest stitch on your machine, remembering to leave your thread tails for gathering. Now we're going to attach our shirred back waist panel to the bottom of the back bodice piece. Now I'm going to place them right sides together, pin at the center. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine, matching up the edges of both pieces, I'm going to sew them together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance stretching that shirred back panel out as I sew to get an even stitch. And do this all the way across. If it also helps to make sure you get things even, you can sew a row of basting stitches all along the bottom of your back bodice, pull those threads slightly to gather them in just a tiny bit, and then pin this shirred panel to the back bodice before you take it to your sewing machine. This helped me to better distribute the material at the bottom of my back bodice to make sure that everything's stitched up evenly. And then finish this seam in your preferred method, I've gone ahead and surged the edges there. Grab your two back yoke pieces and we're going to sandwich the back bodice in between. Place the top gathered edge of your back bodice piece right sides together with your outer yoke piece. Pin in place from the outer edge to the notch on both sides. Take the right side of your inner yoke and place it on the wrong side of your back bodice. So your two yoke pieces are technically right sides together and the bodice piece is sandwiched in between. You can add this yoke to your pinning, pinning again from the notch to the side seam on both sides. 
Now start pulling the gathering stitches of your back bodice so that it fits between the yokes. Once the gathered bodice fits between the notches, go ahead and pin in place. Now sew through all layers with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once that seam is sewn, open out your yoke so that they're wrong sides together and give this seam a really good press. Once you've pressed that seam, we're going to turn the yokes down once more so that they're right sides together and the bodice is sandwiched in between. Rolling the bodice to the inside so that it's out of the way and with the neckline of the yoke still right sides together, go ahead and pin it in place. We're going to sew the necklines together here. Sew from one edge of the neckline to the other with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now that we have the neckline of our yokes sewn together, we're going to understitch the yoke. Open out the yoke over the seam allowance so that the seam allowance is pointed down toward the inner yoke. Then you're going to understitch sewing the inner yoke to the seam allowance an eighth of an inch away from the original stitching line from one side of the neckline to the other. Sewing from one side to the other might get a little bit tricky because we're working in between these fabrics here. So if you have to, you can stitch as far as you can, back stitch to secure, and then start again from the other side with your same 1 8 inch seam allowance until your stitching meets where you stopped earlier and back stitch to secure. Once your neckline is understitched, go ahead and give it a good press. I've gone ahead and attached one of my front bodice pieces to the yoke shoulder seam. You're going to do this for both front bodice pieces at both of your shoulder seams. Place the top of your front bodice piece right sides together with the corresponding yoke piece at the shoulder seam. Line them up at the neckline seam and then take your inner yoke piece and flip it over that seam so that the front bodice is sandwiched in between. With the top of your center front snugly lined up against that neckline seam at the top, pin in place. Pull the gathering stitches at the top of your front bodice so that it fits the shoulder seam of the yoke. Once those gathers fit, go ahead and pin in place through all layers at this front shoulder seam. Sew that together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once that's sewn, go ahead and turn these yokes right side out. And you can give these front shoulder seams a good press. Before I attach my pockets to the skirt, I'm going to serge the entire perimeter of each pocket for both pairs of pockets. I'm also going to serge each of my front and back skirt side seams separately. Place one of your pockets right sides together with one of your front skirt side seams and pin in place from notch to notch. I've marked my notches here with pins and this is where we're going to be starting and stopping our stitching. And do this for both of your pockets at both of your front skirt side seams. Once the pockets are attached to the front skirt, we're going to understitch. So open out your pocket over that seam. Sew this pocket to the seam allowance an eighth of an inch away from your original stitching line, just as we did for the neckline earlier. And just as we sewed the pocket to the side seam, we're understitching only from notch to notch. Do this understitching for both of the pockets on your front skirt pieces. Now grab one of your free pocket pieces and place it right sides together with your attached pocket. Pin all the way around the curved edge. Note that the surged edge of this loose pocket piece will extend over your attached pocket by 3 eighths of an inch. And this surged edge will be attached to our back skirt piece later. Sew the curved edges of your pockets together with a 3 eighth inch seam allowance. And do this for both sets of pockets for both side seams of your front skirt. Apply interfacing along the center front of your front skirt pieces. Just as we did for the bodice pieces earlier, we're going to turn this interfaced section to the wrong side, right along the edge of that interfacing on the inside, and give that a good press. You're also going to press this raw edge to the wrong side by 3 eighths of an inch. 
With the raw edge tucked under, we're going to edge stitch along this folded edge all the way from the top to the bottom of the skirt. Do this for both of your front skirt pieces. Here are the bottoms of both of my front bodice pieces. To prepare for attaching these bodice yokes to our skirt pieces, I've gone ahead and pressed the seam allowances of the inner yokes only to the inside by 3 eighths of an inch. And I've done this for both inner yoke pieces. And for the top of both of my front skirt pieces, I've gone ahead and sewn my gathering stitches so that I can pull these gathers to fit the front bottom yoke. Now with right sides together, I'm going to place the top edge of my skirt along the bottom edge yoke of my bodice, matching the center front of my skirt with the center front seam line of the yoke, and pin in place. Also pin in place at the side seam. Now pull your gathering stitches so that the skirt fits the yoke. Once it fits and your gathers are distributed evenly, go ahead and pin in place. Now we're going to sew our front skirt to the front yoke only, from the side seam to the center front seam, using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now that you've sewn that seam, open out the yoke, Take the bottom edge of the inner yoke that we pressed to the inside and place that folded edge right over the stitches that we just sewed. And pin in place. And then you're going to edge stitch close to this inner fold all the way across. Repeat all of these steps to attach your opposite front skirt piece to your opposite yoke piece. Now it's time to attach the top of the back skirt to the bottom shirred edge of the back bodice. Just as I did when I was attaching the top of the shirred portion to the back bodice earlier, I've gone ahead and sewn basting stitches all across the top of my back skirt. This way I can ease the top of the skirt in a little bit to make sure that I get a uniform stitch across that shirring. Now I'm going to place my shirred back bodice right sides together with the top of the skirt, matching my centers and pin in place. Then I'm going to ease, stretch, and pin all the way across. And now I can sew this seam with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I went ahead and serged the bottom of this connecting skirt and back bodice piece. And I also went ahead and serged the side seams of my front bodice pieces so that they blend into the serging for the skirt pieces that I did earlier. Now I'm going to place my front and back dress pieces right sides together, and I'm going to pin the sides of the dress together from the underarm seam to the bottom of the dress. Sew both of our side seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. When you get to the pocket, make sure that you're pinning your back skirt to the loose pocket seam, and as you're sewing this seam, make sure that you're not catching the other sewn pocket on the other side or you'll sew your pocket shut. Sew this side seam and then repeat for your other side seam as well. For the very bottom hem of the dress, we're going to do a rolled hem. You can decide how wide you want your hem to be depending on how much length you wanna lose from the bottom of the dress. I've gone ahead and pressed the raw edge of the bottom of my dress to the wrong side by one inch. I'm going to take the raw edge and fold it to the crease and then fold that on the crease and pin in place all the way across. Once you have that pinned in place, take it to your sewing machine and edge stitch close to that inner fold all the way across from center front to center front. To prepare for inserting our sleeves, take your bodice to the sewing machine and sew together the two pieces of the back yoke so that those back pieces become one and it's easier to insert the sleeve. I've sewn the two back yoke pieces together here using about a quarter inch seam allowance. And do this on both sides. Right above your underarm seam on your sleeve, you have a notch indicating the front of your sleeve. Match your front notch with your corresponding front bodice piece at the armhole and pin all the way around. Between the notches at the top of your sleeve cap, pull your gathering stitches so that the sleeve fits into the armhole. Distribute those gathers evenly and then pin in place. Do this to attach both of your sleeves to your bodice. 
Now sew around both of your armholes with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and serge your seams to finish. On your front yoke and front skirt pattern pieces, you have marks indicating where to place your buttonholes. I've placed pins all along the center front and I'm ready to sew my buttonholes. Place your placket with the buttonholes over the placket on the opposite side, lining them up perfectly and mark on the other side where you want your buttons to go. I've marked my button placements here with pins and now I'm ready to sew them in place. And once all your buttons are attached, you're all done with your dress. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you check out my other videos for more great sewing inspiration and I'll see you in the next video.